Hello and welcome to this tutorial on electric circuit. Today we're going to flirt a bit with the fundamental and with the fundamentals of electrical generation. But to, um, before before we go further, I'd like to deviate a bit and talk about um, the chemistry of, of electrical um, generation. So um, we all know that it's possible for an atom to lose or gain an electron. Now essentially if, if an electrical voltage is applied across a material that has these three electrons, the, the electrons tend to move in, in, in a certain direction and this movement of electrons of free electrons is what we call um, electricity. And another way to put this is that um, current is the flow well, it's the rate of the movement of charge. It's essentially the quantity of charge, of electrical charge. So current is at the rate of flow of charge. And charge, the symbol for charge is Q. The symbol for current is I. And time is T, obviously. And charge is actually measured in coulombs. I think there should be a U. Um, coulombs. I think that's the spelling, I'm not sure. If not, then you can correct me. Um, current is um, measured in, or we tend to use I, that's the symbol for current, and it's measured in amp, or you can call it amperes, if, you, if you've got time to pronounce the whole thing. And obviously we know that time is, well, needless to say, but hey. Is measured in seconds and we're gonna go ahead and do some basic calculations involving current time and obviously charge so say we have a current well at the time of 15 milliseconds and we want to know the current that has actually flowed within this time of 15 milliseconds if um, a charge of 0.24 Columns. If we have a charge of 0 0.24 coulombs, we know that Q is equal to I T. Um, I is equal to Q over T. That's a Q by the way. Q over T. And this brings us to 0 0.24, um, which is the charge divided by 15 times 10 to the minus 3 obviously we have 10 to the minus 3 because of the milliseconds we know that milli um, is equal to 10 to the minus 3 basically a thousand um, or 1 over a thousand and what do we get? Um, so we have a current of um, that gives us 240 divided by 15 and we have 16 amps now you know when you get your answer by the way think about it and make sure it sounds reasonable enough and obviously 16 amp for 50 milliseconds sounds you know reasonable okay now we're gonna call this problem one um, the first one and we're gonna do another problem here so we have if a current of 10 so what charge do you get if a current of 10 amps, amps um, flows for flows for you know four minutes you know it's a slightly more complicated but you know again you go back to the formula q is equal to i t and you know just think about it first and we know what i is we know that i is 10 t is 4 minutes so 4 minutes is 4 times what 4 times 60 um, let's get another color what we have is 10 times 4 times 60 10 times 4 times 60 sorry 60 and what we have is 2400 Columns. 
all right um so now we're going to talk about some more interesting stuff and um we're going to talk about potential difference um which is also known as voltage and um well we already know that for a current to flow between two points in a circuit there has to be an applied voltage and um well we have current and the convention is actually that current flows from the positive terminal so the electrons flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal and here we have we, we know what a voltage does um, if you don't know I'm just gonna say a voltage is an instrument that measures sorry a voltmeter voltage measurement takes voltage readings and you can buy this um, you can buy a voltmeter off the internet um, you know if you really want to if you've got some circuit project that you're working on and here we have an ammeter I think that's that's how you spell it and um, this is an instrument that measures um, measures current basically measures current and uh, again you can buy this off the internet and here we have um, a filament lamp um, a filament lamp but um, I mean the voltage and the current um, are not the are not the only two things that you can measure in a circuit you can measure um, the resistance we measure resistance using an instrument called anometer so I'll, I'll just write it down here ohmmeter I think that's a double M and this obviously measures um, resistance it measures circuit resistance and um, if you if you don't want to buy you know the the voltmeter the ammeter and the ohmmeter buy another instrument called the multimeter the multimeter and this instrument is, is more is more of a universal instrument that can measure voltage so you can up change it to a setting that measures voltage you can measure current and you can also measure or oh, um well resistance if, if you like to if that's what you'd like to measure now that we understand how current flows in a circuit I think it's time to introduce us to the concept Ohm's law. So we have um, the law states that current is directly proportional to applied voltage. So you have current is directly proportional to applied voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance, which is what we have here. And you can rewrite this law to to be V equal to I R or R equal to V over I. Let's do a simple calculation now involving Ohm's law. So we have um so for instance so we have a current of 0 0.8 amps flowing um through a resistor. I don't really need to write this out but hey I've already started the resistor and you have um well when an applied voltage of 20 volts is present so you have an applied voltage of 20 volts causing a current a current of 0 0.8 amps to flow so the question is um find find the resistance so find the circuit of resistance. Okay, now you can easily do this using Ohm's law. We know that V is equal to I R. So we know the voltage is 20 volts. Is equal to we know the current 0.8 um, R. So we can easily divide 20 over 0.8 to give us the resistance. And um, I think this should be around. Um, 
200 over 8 which should be 25 ohms okay um, so now we're going to do one more problem involving ohms law um, B equal IR voltage equal to current times resistance before we move on to um, other concepts such as power um, electrical energy and, and so on and so forth so on the next page um, we have a simple problem again it says a hundred volt battery is connected across a resistor and causes a current of five milliamps to flow determine the resistance of the resistor and if the voltage is now reduced to 25, 25 volts what would be the new value of the current flowing now you know we know that Ohm's law is V is equal to IR battery and initially we have a 100 volt battery connected across a resistor causing a 5 milliamp which is essentially equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 3 milli is basically 1 over a thousand and we have 100 volt which is the voltage and this is our current now resistance is um uh, so you can rearrange your ohms law to get r is equal to v of i and so what you have is r is equal to v over i which gives us 100 which is the voltage divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 3 which is the current and what we have is um, 100 you get the, uh, 100 times a thousand over five I think yeah and this gives us uh, it gives us 20 20 kilo ohms so our resistance so we have a resistance of A circuit resistance of 20 20,000 ohms which is equal to 20 kilo ohms kilo ohms now the next question is um, if the if the voltage is now reduced to 25 volts so now if the 100 V voltage has been reduced to 25 volts what would be the value of the new current and um, we still have a circuit resistance of 20 20 kilo ohms so question is okay what's the new current so again we know that v is equal to i r i is equal to v over r and this gives us 25 divided by 20,000 and I think we get 1.25 milliamps so when there's a voltage drop from 100 to 25 volts we get 1.25 milliamp and um, now we've we've heard about um, the concept of resistance and most electrical elements um, you know light bulbs you know um, they, they tend to have inbuilt resistance to link that back to the idea of a conductor conductors tend to have um, lower resistance which allows electrical current to flow and all metals well, are essentially conductors um, an example would be copper brass platinum silver um, gold and even carbon carbon I wouldn't say is a metal but it does conduct electricity because it does have um, free electrons and on the other hand an insulator is a material that's you know that has a very 
a very high resistance which does not allow um, electrical currents to flow and examples of insulators are you know plastic glass air paper you know um yeah now let's move on to um electrical power and um electrical energy power is essentially um the product of the potential difference and current so power um let's just call that p um so we're saying power p or symbol p is equal to the product of the voltage the potential difference times um times current and um, this is measured in watts and um, now let's try to see if we can obtain a different expression for power and we know from ohm's law um we know from ohm's law get another color green yeah why not um we know that v is equal to i r and so this means that power is equal to well if you replace v as v here with um i l so what you're going to get is actually i times i times r equal to i squared r and this here ladies and gentlemen is another formula well it's essentially the same formula but it's a different way of obtaining electrical power so you might have you might be given the current and the resistance and you're told to work at power and here you might be given the voltage and the current and told to work at power now we can yet obtain another expression for power using ohms law again so let's go back to um let's go back to red now we know that p is equal to voltage times current now from ohm's law again we know that well we know that current is essentially um voltage divided by resistance so we can replace the i what color should i use violet yeah why not so we can replace the i with so i'm sorry about that with this so what we have is power is equal to v times v over r and this gives us v squared over r now it's important to to understand how to derive um the power formulas now let's do um an interesting problem on on power so we have um an electrical kettle you know in your kitchen um that has um so your kettle um I, I like to think everyone has a kettle by the way has a resistance a resistance with our resistance of 30 ohms so the problem is um find the current and the symbol for current is i so next time i won't be using current i'll just call it i and you should know that that's current find the current when the kettle is connected to to a t4e um volt supply find current when kettle connected is connected to a 240 volts supply so that's a b i want to know the power rating of our kettle 
so now um to find the current we know the we know the voltage 24a and we know the resistance of our kettle which is 30 ohms so again we know that v is equal to i l and from here you can rewrite the, the, the formula to r is equal to v over r so what we actually have is 240 voltage which is that voltage um divided by 30 which is that resistance and that gives you 24 over 3 that's 8 amps and this is that current so this is the a part of the question and we're going to solve the b part of the question over here so now we'd like to know the power rating so what do we actually have so we have the resistance of 30 ohms we have a current of 8 amps and we have a voltage supply of 240 volt now we can we can use um now we can use this formula we can use the second one i squared r or we can use v squared r because essentially in this question we have all the quantities that you know that we need to calculate power using any of the formulas so um let's use the uh, let's use the first one so using the first one we know that power is equal to voltage times current and what do we have we have a voltage of 240 volts times a current of 8 amps and i think that gives us 24 times 8 is around to i have no idea 1920 yeah yeah that looks right so 1920 watts which is essentially 1.92 kilowatts um okay um, i'm just gonna move on and do one more question on um, electrical power rating before we talk about electrical energy now um we have um a lamp with a resistance of 960 ohms and a supply voltage of 240 volts and um, we'd like to know what the current is and the power rating of a, of a lamp we start with ohm's law v equal to ir and we'd like to know the current first obviously so we know that the current is v of r which is equal to 240 times 960 and i think that gives us um 24 into 96 that's four times one over four so 0 0.25 um 0 0.25 amps that's an a by the way now we can go ahead and obtain our power rating power rating p is equal to now we can use v times i to obtain the power we can also use i squared r and we can also use v squared r so um but for this i think i'm gonna use the middle one um apologies for that okay my my laptop just just messed up um okay so i'm gonna use actually you know let's you know what it doesn't really matter but i'm gonna use the top of the first one so we have 240 the voltage times the current 0 0.25 and this gives us 60 watts and if you use the second one what you have is 0 0.25 times 960 um 0.25 squared times 962 and we'll see at 60 watt 
um, and third one we have 240 squared over 960 and I assure you you'll still get 60 watt so whichever formula makes you that you're most comfortable with go for it and um, by the way if you don't get 60 watts inbox me again <laughs> I'd like to know so um, now we're going to talk about um, electrical energy um, on the next page well electrical energy is basically so the symbol for that is A and that is power times time and we know that power is um, the unit for power is watt and the unit for time is second so therefore the unit for energy is um, watt second watt seconds and that's the units for energy and this is essentially equal to one joule so I, I don't know in your physics um, lessons your, um, in your lectures you might be you know they might be using the unit joule or they might be using watt seconds it doesn't really matter they're, they're the same thing um so what i'm saying is one watt second is equal to one joule now um obviously if the power is measured in kilowatts and your time is measured in hours then you would have the unit as kilowatt hour so kilowatt hours ERS um, well we, we tend to call this the unit of electricity so one kilowatt hour is actually one unit of electricity and I hope that makes sense um okay we're gonna do a simple problem now a simple problem involving electrical energy so essentially we have a 12 volt battery um connected across okay connected across a load of 40 ohms so we'd like to know the current um, flowing in the load and we'd like to know the power and so the current the power and we'd like to know the energy dissipation energy dissipation how to spell dissipation I have no idea how to spell I think that's a double S I patient okay first of all um, the current obviously you have to use V is equal to IR ohm's law and um, we have a battery and we know that I we can rearrange the ohm's law to get I equal to V over R and that current would be 12 over 40 and 0 0.3 amps sorry not 0 0.5 that should be 305 0 0.3 amps now power is um we know that p is equal to voltage times current and we know that the voltage is 12 volts we know that the current is 0 0.3 amps so what we have is a power of 12 times 0 0.3 12 times 3 36 so we have 3.6 watts and energy dissipation well we know that energy is 
you know power times time and we have um a power of 3.6 watts and the time is actually the time is in two minutes so we have the time of two minutes which is two times 60 and we should have a power of um 120 times 3.6 4 432 joules um i could have easily said 432 watt second so um again we have a 12 volt battery connected across across a load of 40 ohms and um, we like to run the power right in and the energy dissipated in two minutes so that should be in two minutes well that's it for today and look out for more tutorials on electrical engineering and i hope to see you soon